The name of Canada has been in use since the founding of the French colony of Canada in the 16th century. The name originates from a St. Lawrence Iroquoian word Canada or Canada for settlement, village, or land. It is pronounced in English and Canad in standard Quebec French. In Inuktitut, one of the official languages of the territory of Nunavut, the First Nations word pronounced Kanada is used, with the Inuktitut syllabics. The first French colony of Canada, which formed one of several colonies within New France, was set up along the St. Lawrence River and the northern shores of the Great Lakes. Later the area became two British colonies, called Upper Canada and Lower Canada until their union as the British Province of Canada in 1841. Upon Confederation in 1867, the name Canada was officially adopted for the New Dominion, which was commonly referred to as the Dominion of Canada until after World War II. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The name Canada is now generally accepted as originating from the St. Lawrence Iroquoian word Kanada or Canada, meaning village or settlement. Related translations include land or town, with subsequent terminologies meaning cluster of dwellings or collection of huts. This explanation is historically documented in Jacques Cartier's Bref Raquette et succinct narration de la navigation fait en MDXXXV et MDXXXVI. Although the Laurentian language, which was spoken by the inhabitants of St. Lawrence Valley settlements such as Stadacona modern-day Quebec City and Hochelaga modern-day Montreal in the 16th century, is now extinct, it was closely related to other dialects of the Iroquoian languages, such as the Oneida and Mohawk languages. The word kana, ta still means «town» in Mohawk, and related cognates include ganatahe and ayanakananda in the Onondaga and Seneca languages respectively. Prior to archaeological confirmation that the St. Lawrence Iroquois were a separate people from the Mohawk, most sources specifically link the name's origin to the Mohawk word instead of the Laurentian one. A widespread perception in Canadian folklore is that Cartier misunderstood the term «Canada» as the existing proper name of the Iroquois people's entire territory rather than the generic class noun for a town or village—for instance, the Historica Foundation of Canada's Heritage Minute film devoted to Cartier's landing at Hakalaga is scripted as having Cartier believe that, Kanata or Canada was the established name of the entire country. This is not supported by Cartier's own writings, however—in Bref Raquette, Cartier fully understands the actual meaning of the word. They call a town Canada, and his earliest name for the wider territory is Le Pays des Canadas, Country of Canadas, Land of Canadas, or Land of Villages. While the St. Lawrence Iroquoian origin for the name Canada is now widely accepted, other theories have been put forth in the past. <laughs> Portuguese or Spanish origin theory The most common alternative theory suggested that the name originated when Portuguese or Spanish explorers, having explored the northern part of the continent and unable to find gold and silver, wrote Ca nada, nothing here, in Portuguese, Aca nada, Aqui nada or El Cabo de nada, Cape nothing, in Spanish on that part of their maps. An alternative explanation favored by philologist Marshall Elliott linked the name to the Spanish word, Cañada, meaning, glen, or, valley. The earliest iterations of the Spanish, nothing here, theory stated that the explorers made the declaration upon visiting the Bay of Chalor, while later versions left out any identifying geographic detail. The known Portuguese presence in modern Canadian territory, meanwhile, was located in Newfoundland and Labrador. Neither region is located anywhere near Iroquoian territory, and the name Canada does not appear on any Spanish or Portuguese maps of the North American coast that predate Cartier's visit. No name for the Bay of Chalor is attested at all in Spanish sources from that period, while the only name for Newfoundland attested in Portuguese sources is Terra Nova do Bacalheo, after the region's plentiful cod. In most versions of the Iberian origin theory, the Spanish or Portuguese passed their name on to the Iroquois, who rapidly adopted it in place of their own prior word for a village. However, no historical evidence for any such Iberian Iroquoian interaction has ever actually been found. Eliot's Valley 
Theory, conversely, was that the Spanish gave their name for the area directly to Cartier, who then entirely ignored or passed over the virtually identical Iroquoian word. According to Eliot, Cartier never explicitly stated that there was a direct connection between Canada or Kanata as the Iroquoian word for village and Canada as the new name of the entire territory, and never accounted for the spelling difference between Kanata and Canada and thus the Spanish etymology had to be favoured because the spellings matched. Notably, Cartier never wrote of having any awareness of any pre-existing Spanish or Portuguese name for the region either, meaning that Eliot's allegation that the Kannada derivation was not adequately supported by Cartier's own writing on the matter was also true of his own preferred theory. Franciscan priest André the Vet claimed that the word derived from Sagada Canada, an answer reportedly given by Spaniards in the St. Lawrence Valley area when asked what their purpose was. According to the Vet, the phrase meant that they were seeking land or that they were hunting. Few academics subscribe to the Iberian origin theory today, although some Spanish or Portuguese historians continue to support it over an Iroquoian route. <laughs> Minor or humorous theories British philologist B. Davies surmised that by the same process which initially saw the First Nations mislabeled as Indians, the country came to be named for the Karnata region of India or that region's Kannada ethnic group. Although his theory has attracted no significant support from other academics, additional theories have attributed the name, Canada, to a word in an unspecified indigenous language for, mouth of the country, in reference to the Gulf of St. Lawrence, to a Cree word for, neat or clean to a claimed Innu war cry of Khan na dun, kunatan, to a shared Cree and Innu word, Pakanata, which purportedly meant, without a plan, or, I don't know, to a short-lived French colony purportedly established by a settler whose surname was Cain, to Cartier's description elsewhere in his writings of Labrador as, the land God gave to Cain, or to a claim that the early French habitants demanded a Canada of spruce beer from the local intendant a claim easily debunked by the facts that the habitants would have been speaking French, not English, and that canning did not exist until the 19th century. In their 1983 book The Anglo Guide to Survival in Quebec, humorists Josh Freed and John Kalina tied the Iberian origin theory to the phrase nada mas caca nothing but shit". No historian or linguist has ever analyzed this explanation as anything more than an obvious joke. Canadian The demonym, Canadian, or Canadian, used to refer exclusively to the indigenous groups who were native to the territory. Its use was extended over time to the French settlers of New France, and later the English settlers of Upper Canada. New France European explorer Jacques Cartier transcribed the word as «Canada» and was the first European to use the word to refer not only to the village of Stadacona but also to the neighbouring region and to the St. Lawrence River, which he called Rivière de Canada during his second voyage in 1535. By the mid-1500s, European books and maps began referring to this region as Canada. Canada became the name of a colony in New France that stretched along the St. Lawrence River. The terms Canada and «New France» were often used interchangeably during the colonial period. <inaudible> <inaudible> British North America After the British conquest of New France including seeding of the French colony, Canada in 1763, the colony was renamed the Province of Quebec. Following the American Revolution and the influx of United Empire loyalists into Quebec, the colony was split on 26 December 1791 into Upper and Lower Canada, sometime being collectively known as the Canadas. The first time that the name, Canada, was used officially, in the British regime, some reports from the 1840s suggest that in that era, the word, Canada, was commonly pronounced, Cow -na -da". Rather than its more contemporary pronunciation, Upper and Lower Canada were merged into one colony, the Province of Canada, in 1841, based on the recommendations of the Durham Report. The former colonies were then known as Canada East and Canada West, and a single legislature was established with equal representation from each. 
Underpopulated Canada West opposed demands by Canada East for representation by population, but the roles reversed as Canada West's population surpassed the East's. The single colony remained governed in this way until 1 July 1867, often with coalition governments. A new capital city was being built at Ottawa, chosen in 1857 by Queen Victoria, and became a national capital. Selection of the name Canada At the conferences held in London to determine the form of confederation that would unite the province of Canada now Ontario and Quebec, the province of New Brunswick and the province of Nova Scotia, a delegate from either Nova Scotia or New Brunswick proposed the name Canada in February 1867, and it was unanimously accepted by the other delegates. There appears to have been little discussion, though other names were suggested. Other proposed names While the province's delegates spent little time, if any, in settling on Canada as the name for the new country, others proposed a variety of other names Anglia, the medieval Latin name for England Albionoria Albion of the North Bialia, from Borealis, the Latin word for northern, compare with Australia Cabocha, in honour of Italian explorer John Cabot, who explored the eastern coast of Canada for England Colonia Ephisga, an acronym of English, French, Irish, Scottish, German, Aboriginal Hakalaga, an old name for Montreal Laurentia Mesopelagia land between the seas, New Albion Norland Superior Tupona, derived from the United Provinces of North America Transatlantica Ursalia place of bears Vesperia land of the evening star Victorialand in honor of Queen Victoria Walter Bagaho of the Economist newspaper in London argued that the new nation should be called Northland or Anglia instead of Canada On these names the statesman Thomas Darcy McGee commented now I would ask any honourable member of the House how he would feel if he woke up some fine morning and found himself, instead of a Canadian, a Tuponian or a Hochlegander. <laughs> Adoption of Dominion During the Charlottetown Conference of 1864, John A. Macdonald, who later became the first Prime Minister of Canada, talked of "...founding a great British monarchy." in connection with the British Empire. He advocated, in the fourth Canadian draft of the British North America Act, the name, "'Kingdom of Canada' in the text is said, The word Parliament shall mean the legislature or Parliament of the Kingdom of Canada. The word Kingdom shall mean and comprehend the United Provinces of Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. The words Privy Council shall mean such persons as may from time to time be appointed, by the Governor-General, and sworn to aid and advise in the government of the Kingdom. Canada's founders, led by Sir John A. Macdonald wished their new nation to be called the Kingdom of Canada, to "...fix the monarchical basis of the Constitution." The Governor-General at the time, the Viscount Monk, supported the move to designate Canada a Kingdom, however, officials at the Colonial Office in London opposed this potentially "...premature," and pretentious reference for a new country they were also wary of antagonizing the united states which had emerged from its civil war as a formidable military power with unsettled grievances because british interests had sold ships to the confederacy despite a blockade and thus opposed the use of terms such as kingdom or empire to describe the new country new brunswick premier sir samuel leonard tilley suggested the term dominion inspired by psalm chapter 72 verse 8 from the king james bible he shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth." This is also echoed in Canada's motto, Amari usque ad mare Latin for, from sea to sea. The term had been used for centuries to refer to the lands held by a monarch, and had previously been adopted as titles for the Dominion of New England and the Dominion and Colony of Virginia. It continued to apply as a generic term for the major colonial possessions of the British Empire until well into the 20th century, although Tilly and the other Fathers of Confederation broadened the meaning of the word «dominion» to a «virtual synonym for sovereign state». Its adoption as a title for Canada in 1867 served the purpose of upholding the monarchist principle in Canada. In a letter to Queen Victoria, Lord Carnarvon stated, 
The North American delegates are anxious that the United Provinces should be designated as the Dominion of Canada, it is a new title, but intended on their part as a tribute to the monarchical principle which they earnestly desire to uphold. Macdonald, however, bemoaned its adoption. In a letter to Lord Knutsford on the topic of the loss of the use of the word kingdom, Macdonald said, a great opportunity was lost in 1867 when the Dominion was formed out of the several provinces. The declaration of all the BNA provinces that they desired as one Dominion to remain a portion of the Empire showed what wise government and generous treatment would do, and should have been marked as an epoch in the history of England. This would probably have been the case had Lord Carnarvon, who, as colonial minister, had sat at the cradle of the new Dominion, remained in office. His ill-omened resignation was followed by the appointment of the late Duke of Buckingham, who had as his adviser the then Governor-General, Lord Monk, both good men, certainly, but quite unable, from the constitution of their minds, to rise to the occasion. Had a different course been pursued, for instance, had United Canada been declared to be an auxiliary kingdom, as it was in the Canadian draft of the bill, I feel sure almost that the Australian colonies would, ere this, have been applying to be placed in the same rank as the Kingdom of Canada. He added as a postscript that it was adopted on the suggestion of British colonial ministers to avoid offending Republican sensibilities in the United States. P.S. On reading the above over I see that it will convey the impression that the change of title from Kingdom to Dominion was caused by the Duke of Buckingham. This is not so. It was made at the instance of Lord Derby, then Foreign Minister, who feared the first name would wound the sensibilities of the Yankees. I mentioned this incident in our history to Lord Beaconsfield at Hewenden in 1879, who said, I was not aware of the circumstance, but it is so like Derby, a very good fellow, but who lives in a region of perpetual funk. Use of the term Dominion was formalized in 1867 through Canadian Confederation. In the Constitution of Canada, namely the Constitution Act, 1867 British North America Acts, the preamble of the Act indicates, Whereas the provinces of Canada, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick have expressed their desire to be federally united into one dominion under the crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, with a constitution similar in principle to that of the United Kingdom. And Section 2 indicates that the provinces shall form and be one dominion under the name of Canada, and on and after that day those three provinces shall form and be one dominion under that name accordingly. In J.S. Ewart's two-volume work, The Kingdom Papers, it is noted that the following names were considered for the Union of British North America, the United Colony of Canada, the United Provinces of Canada, and the Federated Provinces of Canada. Ewart was also an ardent advocate for the formation of the Republic of Canada, a position which was rarely expressed in those times. <laughs> French terms for dominion The French translation of the 1867 British North America Act translated, One Dominion under the name of Canada, as, Un seul et meme puissance sous le nom de Canada, using puissance power as a translation for dominion. Later, the English loan word dominion was also used in French. The Fathers of Confederation met at the Quebec Conference of 1864 to discuss the terms of this new union. One issue on the agenda was to determine the unions. Feudal rank. See Resolution 71 of the Quebec Conference, 1864. The candidates for the classification of this new union were the Kingdom of Canada, Le Royaume du Canada, the Realm of Canada, Le Royaume du Canada, the Union of Canada, L'Union du Canada, and the Dominion of Canada, Le Dominion du Canada. Topic: Use of Canada and Dominion of Canada. There are numerous references in United Kingdom Acts of Parliament to the Dominion of Canada and the British North America Act, 1867 referred to the formation of one dominion under the name of Canada. Nonetheless, the term Dominion of Canada appears in the Constitution Act, 1871 usage of which was sanctioned and both appear in other texts of the period, as well as on numerous Canadian banknotes before 1935. Until the 1950s, the term Dominion of Canada was commonly used to identify the country. As Canada acquired political authority and autonomy from the United Kingdom, the federal government began using simply Canada on state documents. 
The transition away from the use of Dominion was formally reflected in 1982 with the passage of the Canada Act, which refers only to Canada. Later that year, the national holiday was renamed from Dominion Day to Canada Day. Section 4 of the 1867 BNA Act also declares that Unless it is otherwise expressed or implied, the name Canada shall be taken to mean Canada as constituted under this Act. And this has been interpreted to mean that the name of the country is simply Canada. No constitutional statute amends this name, and the subsequent Canada Act 1982 does not use the term Dominion. However, the Canadian Constitution includes the preceding BNA Acts, where the term is used. Also, the Canada Act 1982 does not state that Canada is not a Dominion. Official sources of the United Nations system International organizations such as the Organization of American States, the European Union, the United States, and other polities with which Canada has official relations as a state consistently use Canada as the only official name, state that Canada has no long-form name, or that the formal name is simply Canada. While no legal document ever says that the name of the country is anything other than Canada, Dominion and Dominion of Canada remain official titles of the country. In recent years, the terms Dominion of Canada and Dominion are occasionally used to distinguish modern post Canada from either the earlier province of Canada or from the even earlier the Canadas. The terms are also used to distinguish the federal government from the provinces, though in this usage, federal has replaced Dominion. The federal government continues to produce publications and educational materials that specify the currency of these official titles, although these publications are not themselves legal or official documents. For instance, in 2008 the Canadian government registered the Maple Leaf Tartan with the Scottish Tartans Authority under the name Dominion of Canada. See also List of Canadian place names of royal heritage Canadian provincial and territorial name etymologies Origins of names of cities in Canada List of Canadian place names of Ukrainian origin List of Canadian place names of indigenous origin List of Canadian place names of English origin List of Canadian place names of Scottish origin List of Canadian place names of Spanish origin References Further reading External links Origin of the name – Canada, Canadian Heritage